All right. If you found your way to Jeremiah chapter number six today, I'm only going to be preaching out of one verse today. And you say, oh, thankfully, maybe he'll get done a little bit quicker today. Amen. But uh, there's a lot to be had and a lot to be said inside of this one verse. And that's Jeremiah chapter number six, verse number 16. So let me read that to you. It says in verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Let's pray together. Our Father, Lord, today we do thank you and praise you for this day that you've given us. Lord, for this opportunity we have to be in your house today. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's come out, and I pray, Lord, a blessing upon them. Uh, a blessing upon each and every family, Lord, that's represented here today. I pray, Lord, that we come eager and hungry to hear your word and that we'll be receptive. And I pray, Lord, today, as always, as we move forward through the message, that you take the focus and attention away from me, Lord, and you put it on yourself, your word, and your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that our Christian hearts will be encouraged and challenged. And I pray, Lord, today there may be some here today, man, woman, boy, or girl, that does not know Christ as his or her Savior. And I pray today would be the day that your Holy Spirit would speak to their heart, Lord, that they realize that they need to be saved. Father, there are so many that we have on our prayer list that uh, are in need of things and are hurting, and I just pray, Lord, you bless them and work and that your will would be done. I pray for those that are still gathered out in their parking lot. I pray you make the service real to them as well. I pray for many that would want to be here, the sick and the shut-in, and those, Lord, in the nursing homes. I pray, Lord, some way today you'd send a blessing to them as well. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that's been done, the singing and the, the offerings, Lord, and the prayers and the praises. We just can't thank you enough, Lord, for how good you are to us. And we ask all these things today in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Today I'm going to continue, and I don't know if this may be the last message I have in this series. I'm not sure. It depends on how the Lord leads me. But this is the fifth message I've preached about continuing in his love. And at the beginning of the year, in uh, the first Sunday of January the 1st was the first Sunday of this year. We got to start the year out on a Sunday and be in church together. And uh, we shared this verse from the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 9. And it says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And uh, our theme is to continue in his love. And I preached about things that we should love that pertains to the Lord. The first thing I started out way back in January 1st, it, it seems like forever now already, was to love the church. The Lord loved the church and he gave his life for it, and we ought to love the church. I preached about loving to praise, and, and boy, we've already praised the Lord this morning through our songs and through our offerings and just being here fellowshipping together. I preached about loving to pray and how uh, what a privilege being able to pray to an almighty God is. And then I preached last week under, uh, with the help of the Lord and to honor sanctity of human life about loving the breath of life. But today I want to preach to you the message that the Lord's given me titled, Love the Old Paths. And uh, I don't want you to get nervous. I probably don't lost some of you think, here we go. He's going he's gonna to bash us today about how we're too modern and we need to get back to the old things and the old-fashioned things. And, and that's going to be just a little bit of the sermon, but I want to look at it from a totally different perspective and share with you, I believe, what Jeremiah was saying to God's people uh, here in this text when he said for them to go to the old past. Just to set the stage for you just a little bit, Jeremiah, under the inspiration of God, is speaking to the people of Judah. And they have went away from the Word of God. They have went away from the things of God. And if we would pause today, we can look around our country and look around the things that we uh, see. And, uh, boy, we've, we've gotten away from the things of God. And I believe just as Jeremiah was uh, telling these folks this morning, we need to get back to those old paths. We need to get back to what the Lord has in store for us. I am thankful for our uh, singing here at the church. Boy, it's been it's just been wonderful for the last uh, several months. The Lord is just a blessing. And that, that song that the choir done has kind of inspired me uh, for this message to go hand in hand. But I think the Lord worked it out that the choir was ready to sing it and that I would be ready uh, to preach it this morning. And when I'm speaking about the old paths, I want you to get a few things out of your mind before we get started. So let's, let's clear some things out. I'm not talking today about styles of worship. I think all of us today know where I stand on styles of worship. I think our worship should be Christ-honoring. And uh, you say, well, here, here we go. He's already diving into this old stuff. Now, there's a fad that's going around called contemporary worship. And I don't believe that we need to label our worship with any title other than we come today to worship the Lord. 
if you want to look at what contemporary means, and, and most of the time I don't go to Webster's Dictionary to get my definitions, I go to the Word of God to try and figure out what words and what things mean. But Webster gets it right on occasion, and uh, the word that he's described as liberal means marked by characteristics of the present period. So I want you to think about that. If you want your experience with God to be marked by the characteristics of the present period that we're in, I don't believe that's what God wants us to do. I, want, I think he wants our worship to be Christ-honored. I think he wants it, as, as Tommy prayed this morning, I love what he said when he said, Lord, I, I pray that everything that we do and say and sing today, that you would love. That should be our objective today, not to come into God's house to have old-fashioned worship, not to come in to have contemporary worship, but that we come in with a clean heart, with a heart open to be able to worship our Lord and our Savior. Then we get into it and say, well, I'm going to go to this church because they have this style, or I'm going to go to this denomination because they do this. I'm not a fan either of, of that kind of stuff. I pray that we come today, you, all of you that are visitors to our church, you come to Fort for Christ Baptist Church. I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud that we are Baptists. We're Baptists in our doctrines. I can take you to the Word of God and show you why we are. But a new splash for all of us, there's going to be more than Baptists in heaven. Isn't that right, Tommy? He told me that joke, and I may have shared it with you before. He said that an old, old Baptist died, and he went to heaven. And he was taken through the different rooms of heaven, and, and uh, the angel was showing him. He said, here's where the uh, brethren are, and here's where the Pentecostals are, and here's where the Methodists are. And he said, now you got to be really, really quiet. I'm going to take you here to the back room. He said, that's where the Baptists are. And he said, you got to be quiet because they think they're the only ones up here. <laughs> and, uh, but that's not how it's going to be. Uh, one of, I, I've had a friend one time, he was preaching, and it's not Brother Floyd, so we'll clear that up right now. Uh, he made this comment. He said, I'm Baptist from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head. And I thought, well, that, you know, that, that sounds good. But, you know, we need to be more than that. I want If somebody asks me what I am from the uh, soles of my feet to the crown of my head, I'm going to tell you I'm saved. I'm saved from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head. I'm born again by the grace of God, and that's what I am. I'm a Christian. That's what we should be. So let's get all those things out of the way before we dive into really today what the old paths are. I want to try to bring to you, if I could, as quickly as possible, four points that I believe Jeremiah is trying to get to the people of God and to the people of Judah that we need to do. Was, the first one I want to look at is that when we get to these old paths, we need to park in the old paths. Look at the first part of the verse. I'm going to try to divide it out if I could in four different sections. It says in the first part, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways. And then he goes on, he says, And see and ask for the old paths. I want us to focus in on that first word, stand. And, and I believe that God wants us to stand uh, sometimes, not just in, the, in our path or in, in that path, but I believe he wants us to park ourselves so that we can evaluate where we're at on our path. And when we look at that word stand, I want you to automatically think about another word, and that word is standard. You see, our standard today is what I have in front of me. It's what I'm preaching from. It's the word of God. And uh, we'll, we'll get to it here in just a moment, but when Jeremiah, to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag, when he says the old past, he's talking about the standard. He's talking about the word of God. And that's what he's telling his people. He says you need to get back to the standard. And then he's telling them here, I believe that we need to park inside of the, of the path that we're on and evaluate ourselves. Now, today we all love new things. You say, well, I don't like new things, Pastor. I tell you, well, let me uh, give you a little bit of an update here today and try to get you into this message. Today we woke up and the first thing we may have done was go to our bedroom wall and flip on a, a light switch, an electrical switch. And wow, magically the lights came on. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, the old-fashioned uh, ways, they didn't have that. I like that. You say, well, I thought you were an old-fashioned preacher. I am, but I still like electricity. You know, I like the fact that I went to the shower and I turned on the water and, boy, it came on. And guess what? It wasn't cold either. It was hot. Well, I like that. That's not too old-fashioned, is it? And then, you know, we, we get in our cars and and uh, the cars are much smarter than we are today. And there's lights and bells and whistles coming on telling us which way we need to go. And our phone tells us how long it's going to take us to get there because... It knows where we're going. It's kind of scary. But we jump in our automobile, we jump out on the paved road, and we go to church. Well, I tell you, the old-fashioned ways wouldn't be you go out there and you get your horse and buggy hitched up, or you get your saddle on your horse and you go on to church. So you, you see where I'm kind of getting at? We can get, as Christians sometimes, we, need, we get on that soapbox and we say, let's get back to the old past. Let's get back to the old-fashioned ways. 
Well, there's some old-fashioned ways I think we can just lead by where they're at as long as we're staying with the standard and staying with the Word of God. Now, let me give you another little news flash. When you get home, some of you will get on the phone and say, boy, I just heard a really good message or I heard the worst message I've ever heard. And you pick up your smartphone or your, your other phone and you don't have to worry about a party line. You don't have to worry about your neighbor listening in telling you what you're talking about. You didn't have to go to the rotary phone. I was trying to explain to my kids how you would dial seven. Click, 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 click. Four. Click, 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 click. Three. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, what are you? I, yes, I'm that old. I'm, I'm not as old as some today, but I am. I remember that. So look, we, we have progressed, and we've progressed in a good way. But there's many ways that we've progressed where we need to put the brakes on, and we need to stop and look back, and we need to park ourselves in our path and say, Lord, are we uh, on the right path? Turn, if you would, in your Bibles to Titus chapter number 2, one verse, verse number 12. It says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. How? In this present world. I believe God has put us here today. He's gathered this group of people today for a specific plan and a specific purpose. I don't believe it was by coincidence. I don't believe it was by chance. And I believe he's called us today to be a light and to be a witness to him in this present world that we live in. As many of us would like to go back some to the old-fashioned ways or to the old days, we can't do it. And the Lord has told us here that we need to teach ourselves to deny ungodliness, to die, deny worldly lust, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world that he's put us in. I believe today that we can still stick with the standard and live in this present world that he's put us in. The world might label us old-fashioned. They might label us all kinds of different ways. But I believe today that we can live that way. That's what God wants us to do. Now, Jeremiah here again is speaking to, to his people. And they have left the standard. They have gone off the path. In verse number 10, uh, flip back to Jeremiah chapter 6. In verse number 10, it gives us a little insight of how the people have left this old path. It says in verse number 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning? You know, sometimes as a pastor or as a Christian, we probably should ask ourselves that sometimes. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Lord, put us uh, in a path of someone that they could hear your word. But it says, Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. And listen, they cannot hearken. They cannot hear. We look around sometimes and we believe that there's people out there that just cannot hear. I trust you, or trust me this, by the word of God, they are able to hear if we are willing to be an example and a light to them. But he said in this part of verse number 10, he says, Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. You see, the standard today is the same as it was in Jeremiah's day. It's the word of God. Amen. You and I are just a little bit better off than these people are because we have the complete Word of God. They only have pieces and they only have parts of it. But the Bible says that they, the word of the Lord is to them a reproach. You know what that means? It is to them that word reproach means that they are ashamed of it. That in many of them they despised it. We look around today in the world and many people despise what the word of God says. Why? Because it hits close to home. Because it gives us uh, it tells us things that we are doing that do not line up with what God wants us to do. And many times they are received in a wrong way. But here, the, these people, they were ashamed of the Word of God. They despised the Word of God because it says in the last part of verse 10, they have no delight in it. They didn't want anything to do with it. They had no delight in it. Now, as we pause today and we're on our path and we parked ourselves on our path, I want you to ask yourself, where are you at on that path? Are you ashamed of the Word of God? So it's going to get quiet in here. Are we ashamed of the Word of God? Are we willing to stand up? Are we willing to ask God, Whom shall I speak? Whom shall I share your Word with? Do they Are they even able to hear? Uh, when we park on our path, are we ashamed of the Word of God? Do we despise the Word of God? You say, oh, pa that's hard preaching, Pastor. It is because... Sometimes when we're far living out in the life of sin or, or doing things that we want to do, sometimes what the Word of God says is it's hard. And I heard an old preacher talk about, uh, he said, you're rubbing the cat the wrong way. 
And uh, you, you tell, we got a cat at the house. I'd like to give it to somebody if they're here. Uh, Lydia's gone. She's, she's traveling this morning. It's her cat, so I, it's a good Sunday. I can give that thing away to somebody. But uh, he makes all kinds of noises. You rub him the wrong way. He, he doesn't like it. And that's what the, they said with turning around and rubbing the right way. So it's smooth. And that's what too many preachers have done today. They, they've tried to make things smooth. The Lord didn't tell me today to try to make things smooth. He told me to try to deliver with his help this message. And sometimes what we hear is hard for us to hear. But then do we not have a delight in it? Do we want to have everything that we have in our life to do with what the Word of God says? Is this our standard? Are we aligned up with His standard? Now, we've, we've come to this path, and we've parked ourselves in this path, and I think Jeremiah's getting the people's attention, trying to let them know where they're at along their path, but then he uses another word, and that's going to be the second point of the message. We've, we've parked out in our path. Now we need to ponder a little bit in our path. That's a word that we don't use too much anymore. We need to ponder on things. How many of you have ever just sat back and pondered on things and thought about things and seen things? You know, Rachel was going to get mad at me, I'll tell you this, but she loves to people watch. She she was happy today that Nevin was traveling with Lydia and she he's not here today, so she's sitting back in the sound room. And guess what? She can see all of y'all. She sees what you're doing. Jake and Wade, does she? She's seeing who's on her cell phone. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. She's seeing who's paying attention to the message. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you, you see people that go to Walmart and they sit on the chair while their wife shops and then they ponder and just look around at things. And if you do it, probably many things will go through your mind. But Jeremiah has told them to stand in the ways in their path and then he says to see. I believe today that that's what we need to do. Once we've parked, we need to, to take a deep look into our life and to our path to see if it lines up with his standard. Now, let me tell you this, in, in 2 Timothy, you don't have to turn there, there was a man who was serving the Lord. And all of us in our life probably have people that we've looked up to who have served the Lord, who have been an influence in our Christian life. But the Apostle Paul was in a very difficult place in his life, and he had been arrested. He had been arrested for preaching the Word of God. He had been arrested for worshiping the Word of God. All of us today would be guilty. We would be beside him. We'd be sitting in the, in the prison cell with him if we were there in that time. But when he needed this man at the very most, he wasn't there. Why? Because he had forsaken the word of God. He had forsaken the standard. Let me read what the verse says. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, it says, For Demas, now he calls him out by name, uh, he says, Demas hath forsaken me, having what? Loved this present world. Remember what Titus had said? We need, the Lord needs to teach us how to live righteously and soberly and deny ungodliness in this present world. But here's this man who at one time was a, was a friend of the Apostle Paul, was a helper in the ministry, was doing things to serve. And when he needed him most, it says he had forsaken him because of the present world. He said he's departed. He, he, he gives us where he's gone to. And, and, and Ralph, bless you this morning for reading, reading those verses. I know sometimes... Some of those words are tough, and I remind my kids of that all the time. I said, when you fuss at me about what your name is, look, I could go to the Bible and there's other names. I could have named you. Just try me. I'll go to you. You're old enough. I'll go change your name still. But here, uh, Demas, he, he left for the present world. He said he departed to Thessalonica, and uh, Christians went to Galatia, and he said Titus is in Dalmatia. He goes on and he tells Timothy the things that he needs for him to, to bring the, to him while he's in prison. Uh, one of them is a coat because I, I believe it was the winter time and he needed to stay warm just like we do today. But the other thing he asked for was the Word of God. He asked for what the Word of God says, the parchments. He asked Timothy to bring him the standard. Why? You say, why would the Apostle Paul need the standard? Because he was in a very tough place in his life. Now God used him in a great and mighty way, but he was still a man, just like you and I are a woman. And he could have veered off of that standard. Matter of fact, if you or I were arrested and thrown into prison, it'd probably be easy for us to veer away from our standard. It's just the way it is. That's just where we're at today. I think we're soft. I don't say that in a negative way or a mean way. I believe we're soft. I don't believe we have the guts. I don't believe we have the determination that the old folks had. I really don't. But here, he wanted the, the standard. He wanted his parchment so that he could read the Word of God, so that he could ponder on and see where he was at in his walk. Even when he was in this dark place, he still wanted the word of God. You say, well, what about Demas? You said, uh, what did he do? He veered off from the path. He veered off from the standard. 
It doesn't tell us what he did, but it says whatever was attracting him in the present world, he left the ministry to go and do those things. He left service of God to go and do those things. Now, there's many things that can allure us and draw us away from God. There's many things that can allure us and draw us away from the Word of God. And the Bible tells us that sin brings us pleasure. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be going out trying to, to sin if it didn't bring us or bring our flesh pleasure. Now, the Bible also warns us and tells us that sin will only bring us pleasure for a season. But today, we see that Jeremiah is telling these people, park yourself in, this, in, the, in your ways here. I want you to ponder on where you're at. I use this man, Demas, to give us an example, but there's three things within inside of pondering that I want you to think about. Number one, I want you to think about your heart. Where's your heart? Does your heart align up with the standard? Does your heart align up with the old path? Not the old-fashioned ways. Uh, we've, we've already got that out of the way. Not, not, not electricity or not running water or warm water. Does it line up with the Word of God? Does it line up with the standard? Too many times we get the cart out before the horse and we're worried about our family, our kids. We're worried about our friends. We're worried about our church. But we need to start right here with ourselves and our heart. I can tell you if our heart is not lined up with the standard, we can cry out just like Jeremiah said in verse number 10, Whom shall I speak? And nobody's going to listen because our heart's not in the right place. Our heart's not lined up with what the standard is. After we've evaluated our heart, then we can move on and ponder and pray for our family. We can pray for our friends and for our loved ones. And then we can pray for our church. I've told you this a hundred times. If I haven't told you one time before, we can be effective in our community. And I believe we are being effective in our community. I believe the word of God is being uh, sent out from this place and through not just through me but through all of you as well I can see it it's evident in, in the things that are going on here inside the church but we have to love one another before we can love anybody outside these walls we have to get our heart right with one another before we can love others and be that light and be that witness to go out and tell them uh, these things so when we're parked now we're pondering I want you to ponder on what path you're on and then Jeremiah goes on a little bit further and he uses another word he uses the word, look what it says. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. And then he says, ask for the old paths. You know when that word ask is, when we ask God something, we need to do it in prayer. We, don't, we can't come to God with a list of demands and say, here's my list of demands, Lord. This is what I want. I can tell you that's, that's dangerous ground that you're on right there. We need to come to the Lord with, a, with an open heart and open mind and ask the Lord and pray and say, Lord, where am I at on my path? Where am I at with my standard? Where am I at with uh, trying to live a life for you? Lord, does my life align up with your standard? You see, we spend a lot of time trying to worry about what everybody else thinks. We spend a whole lot of time worrying about what our friends and what our family, what our co-workers, and what all those people think. And all the meantime, we don't worry about what God thinks about the situation. We've got it backwards. If we worry about what God thinks, if we said the Bible tells us to seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, if we please him, all the other things will come into line. There's a quote that I have. You can come up to my office at work and, and look at it. I'll show it to you. It hangs on the wall. They haven't fired me for having it up there yet. But Billy Graham said this. He said, we're too busy trying to not offend everybody except for God. You see, we're, we're, we've gotten soft again. We're trying to be politically correct, and I'm worried about what I'm going to preach and what I'm going to say is going to offend somebody. We had a we had a wonderful crowd last week. It looks like we've got an even better crowd here this morning. It is what I preach. If I preach this message, Lord, about the old past or the old-fashioned ways, are we not going to have as many people next week? You see, what I need to worry about is pleasing God. Amen. And then his word will not return void. That's what he's telling Jeremiah here. And he's telling these people, he says, when you... When you get to your path, you park where you're at. He said, I want you to ponder on those things and I want you to pray. You know, that's what we need to do. We need to be praying. We need to be praying for God to give us direction in our life. Many times we just kind of go back and forth. Back and forth. Now, I, I, I think we need to know what the Word of God says. This is what our doctrine is. If somebody asks me, can you show me your doctrinal statement? I can say, yeah, absolutely. Right here it is. Here, here read it. That's it. Now, there's other things that we differ from other churches on, but they don't go away from this, from the Word of God. We should know what uh, His Word is. We should know what our standard is. The Bible tells us if we don't, we'll be tossed 
around to and fro with every wind of doctrine. There's plenty of people out there who are not preaching and teaching the standard. You say, well, they are, uh, they're not as old-fashioned as we are. Well, listen, we're going to be labeled with a lot of things. Old-fashioned, narrow-minded, legalistic, you name it, they'll, the, the, the world's going to label it. Why? Because we're sticking with the standard. Because we're staying with the old paths. Even though we're not old-fashioned. Even though, hey, we're a, we're a Baptist church, but you come in our door, and guess what you're sitting on? Easy. A chair. Not a pew, a chair. We've got carpet on our, on our floor. We've, hey, we've got these new fangled things on the wall, these TV screens that we use. Oh, wait a minute. We, you're not old-fashioned. You, you've gone away from the standard. No, we have not. We've, we've stuck with the standard, and we will always stay with the standard. Just because we have some modern things that we use to, to assist us in worship doesn't mean that we've gone away from the standard. So you see, we're worried about what the world labels us as or what everybody else labels us as. We need to be praying to God, Lord, am I aligned with your standard? There are several people in the Word of God that try to do things on their own. First one is a man that I've already preached about who was arrested for preaching the Word of God, the Apostle Paul. Probably in my preaching, I probably preach sermons from his epistles more than any other book in the Bible. More than any other place in the Bible, I probably used him. Have more illustrations and more examples. But you see, he wasn't always on the right path. Matter of fact, when the Lord spoke to him and he uh, turned his life around and got saved, he was on a path. He was on, the Bible says, a road to Damascus. And if you read the Word of God, you know what it says. You know what he was going to go do. He was going to kill and persecute Christians. Kill and persecute Christians. Now, isn't it ironic later that he was arrested for preaching and teaching the Word of God? God had a plan for him, but God spoke to him on that path. You see, if he would have continued on, who knows what would happen. There's another one in the Bible, Jonah. God gave Jonah a pretty direct path. He said, go down to Nineveh and cry out against your sins. I, I think I was being a little bit brave here on Sunday night when I said that yeah, I, I'd like to go down on Main Street and cry out against some of the sins that go on on Main Street in our community. And one of the dear brothers here at the church, he, he took me serious. He said, hey. You let me know when you're going, I'm going to be right there beside you. Man, Lord, he, hey, i got to watch what I say. Uh, these people here get motivated. But Jonah, he was told to, to go down to Nineveh and cry out against those people's sins, but he didn't want to take the path that God put him on. He took his own path. You know the story. You know what happened. You know he was swallowed up by a big fish. You say, do you really believe that, Pastor? Absolutely. Why? Because that's what the standard says. That's what the old path says. That's what the Word of God says. I don't know that it was a whale. The Bible says that God prepared a big fish, a large fish, that swallowed Job. I believe with all my heart. I believe he was in the belly of that fish, and I believe the, the, the fish vomited him up on the shore, and he had a change of heart. He sat there and thought, man, I should have went the path that the Lord had me on to start with. I went the wrong way around. Then we see there's another one that really doesn't have a name, but it's the prodigal son. We've heard that story many, many times. You see, he, he had a good path before him. He must have had a, a fairly wealthy father because uh, he was a little bit spoiled, I believe. And he went to his father and he said, I, I want my inheritance now. I, I can't wait till you die. You might live to be 100 years old and, and I won't get to enjoy any of the money. So the father gave him the money and you know the story of that too. He went out, the Bible says he wasted it on riotous living. He did what he wanted to do. He followed the wrong path. And where'd he end up? He ended up in the hog pen. Not only was he in the hog pen, but he was eating his supper with the hogs. Now you go out, he didn't have dinner. You know, we have supper here in Page County. If you have dinner, you're a little bit higher class than me. But he had his supper with the hogs. Now you see, that's, that's where it'll take us if we go down the wrong path. I could go on and on. You say, well, you're, you're picking on all the men, and all the men get it. Listen, there was a lady in the Bible, too, that wanted to do things her way. God spoke to... to uh, Lot and his family, and he did everything he could to try to get them out the path that they were on. He sent messengers, angels from heaven to get them and take them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then they were going, he gave them one instruction. He said, I'm going to take you out, I'm going to save you, I'm going to rescue you, but don't look back. You see, the Lord don't want us to look back on our past either. He's done forgiveness us of that. That's, what, that's a tool of the devil. He wants to dangle our past in front of us and, and think we're not worthy. But here, Lot's wife, she couldn't resist it. One more time, she just wanted to turn around and look back. Look at that path that she was on because she was enjoying it. The Bible says she was 
turned to a pillar of salt. Done with, just like that. You say, well, that, that's a, I don't think those things are going to happen today. I don't see it happening either. I see a lot of us that could probably be turned into pillars of salt if God really wanted to look down and condemn us. But he didn't, he didn't want to do that. The Bible says that he sent his son uh, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He wants us to be on his path. He wants us to be on the standard. I can tell you, just because we're on the old path does not mean that we're old-fashioned. It doesn't mean that, we, that we're labeled legalistic and all these things. It means that we have a heart that's willing and wanting to please God because he's done so much for us. You say, well, how do you know all those things? Because Jeremiah tells us in the last part of this verse, and I'll close with this point. So we see we, we've come to that place where we've parked, we've pondered, we've been praying. But then the Lord, if we go back to those old paths, or if we get on his old paths, I believe will prosper. Look at what it says in the end of these verses. I'm going to read the whole thing, and I'm going to focus on the end of it. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. But then what he says, he says, Where is the good way, and walk therein. And listen to what it says, You shall find rest for your souls. I believe with all my heart, if we get back to those old paths, the Lord will prosper us. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel today and telling you that everything in your life is going to be perfect if you stay with the standard or stay with the old stuff. Matter of fact, I've shared with you, I believe last week, I believe sometimes it gets more difficult because we are a threat to the enemy. We are a threat to the devil. He doesn't want us to be on this old path. He doesn't want us to stay with the standard. He wants us to be veered off like Demas was in this present world. But Jeremiah told his people, he said, it's the good way. I can tell you it's the only way. Today we, we've sung songs, and Bruce, thank you for singing that song. You did good. I don't know why your cat didn't come out of his box, because he did a pretty good job on that song. But you see, we all got something to look forward to today, and that's heaven. As long as we know the Lord as our Savior. I didn't say as long as you stayed strictly on his path the whole way, because all of us, if we would evaluate our life somewhere along the line, we have veered off one way or the other from his path. But I'm thankful, just like the prodigal son, he's there waiting for us when we come back to him. Amen? But today, we will prosper in his path. He says it's the good way. He tells us that we need to walk in. And then we will find rest for your souls. Somebody has told me many times, I said, Josh, why don't you slow down a little bit? You need to let this go or let that go. And I always joke and tell them, I'm going to rest when I die. And that's true. It is. My body is going to go into the ground and it's going to rest until it's uh, reunited with the Lord. My spirit and soul is going to go to heaven. I don't know if I'll be resting. I'll be doing whatever the Lord wants me to do. But uh, all of us, though, seriously, we want a little bit of rest. And you, I believe what Jeremiah is saying here, he's not necessarily saying that we need to, he's going to give us a time to take a little extra nap or, or get a little extra sleep. I believe what he's saying is when we walk in that good path, when we stick to the standard, when things do get tough, we're going to know that he's there with us, beside of us each and every way. When the storms and the winds begin to blow, and those people that I said are walking on this path today and on that path tomorrow, they're tossed to and fro, just back and forth. They don't know which way to go. But I believe when we stick to his standard, when we stick to the old ways, to the old paths, he will, will give us rest for our souls. As I said, it doesn't mean that life is going to be perfect, but we're going to know that the Lord is there with us. He's going to be with us throughout our trials and throughout our troubles. Today, I just want you to think about those couple things. I want to ask you this before we close. Have you ever made it to the path? Have you ever truly said a time in your life where, Lord, I'm going to make a commitment to you. I'm, I'm not living the way you want me to live, and I want to live up to your standard. Not to what the world wants me to do, not with what my family wants me to do, what my friends want me to do. I want to live up to your standards. And then you might be here today and you may say, well, there's been a time and place in my life where I made that very commitment, but I have take, taken a wrong turn. I veered off of this path. I need to get back to the standard. If you're in either one of those conditions today, you can get that settled right here today. Not with, just, not with me, but between you and the Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray this morning. Our Father, we do, again, just thank you for this day. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Your precious word. It's inerrant. It's infallible, Lord. It, it doesn't need to be added to or, or taken away. 